in my Liverpool home. In my Liverpool home. Standing in front of the Crown Court in Derby Square, you are next to Queen Victoria's statue. But if you could travel back in time, things would look very different. Going back 782 years to 1232, you will be standing on a rocky ledge above the Mersey, the highest point around here. Below you, you can see a small inlet off the river, where ships can shelter. It's an inlet that will eventually disappear beneath roads and buildings, but its name will remain the Pool. It seems to have a dirty, almost liver-coloured look to it. Liverpool Castle's history is unclear in parts. It was probably built sometime between 1232 and 1247 by William de Ferrers. Little is known about the early structure, but in 1347 the castle had four towers and was surrounded by a dry moat. The castle includes the chapel, bakehouse, brew house, herb garden, dovecot and orchard. <laughs> An inquisition taken in the first year of Edward III, 1326-27, found Robert de Holland in possession of the castle. Over the period 1446-1472, ownership was claimed by Sir Molyneux, who held title as constable of the castle, passing in due course to his son. By 1476, it was clear that structure required repair, and a schedule drawn up for this purpose recommended that the hall and chapel chamber should be covered with shingle. A new chamber to the west was to be covered with stone or mortar, and walls adjoining two of the castle towers were to be covered with turf. Reference is also made to the gatehouse and prison tower. By 1559, the castle had again slipped into a poor state of repair, an expenditure of £150 was suggested in order that the building might be turned into a facility for storage of court rolls. Now we travel forward to 1642. Liverpool Castle is standing on the site and it's an impressive building. It was during the Civil War that the castle witnessed some of the most dramatic scenes in Liverpool's history when Royalist and Parliamentarian forces vied for control. Prince Rupert, having famously declared that a parcel of boys could take Liverpool, gained control of the castle for the Royalists in 1644, but only after a week of fighting and the loss of 1,500 of his men. Parliamentarian John Moore regained possession of the castle and following the Royalist defeat, Parliament ordered that the castle be demolished, but only sections of the wall and gatehouses were taken down. The castle was in ruins by the early 1700s and it was demolished in 1715, with the bricks recycled for other buildings and to build a church in its place. Construction of St George's Church begun on the site of the old castle in 1726 and was consecrated in 1734. 
and closed in 1897. The architect was Thomas Steers and in its initial state it had originally an elegant terrace supported by rustic arches on one side. These arches the frequenters of Red Cross Market used to occupy. The interior fittings were good. The east window had a picture of the crucifixion inserted in 1832. The entire church was rebuilt piecemeal between 1819 and 1825 when structural problems were gradually revealed and a new spire, reduced in height, was finally added in 1833. Demolition of the surrounding houses began in 1827 and within a few years St George's Crescent was built around the church. This was demolished in 1941 following damage during the Liverpool Blitz. In 1863, Mr. Charles Mosley, who was Jewish, was elected mayor, and at this, the incumbent preached the sermon denouncing the choice. From that time, the mayor and corporation ceased to attend St. George's. Having long failed to attract a congregation, the church was closed in 1897 and subsequently demolished. In 1902, the site was used for the construction of the Victoria Monument, which survives to this day. The Victoria Monument was erected by the most important Liverpool-based sculptor, C.J. Allen. The monument itself is of Portland stone and all the figures are in bronze. We might pause to note that this monument contains an unusually large number of statues, as well as the figure of Victoria. We have four basal groups of three figures each, four upper figures, each with two infants, and the summit angel. Today the castle is commemorated by a plaque on the side of the Queen Victoria Monument. Local legend says that tunnels led through the sandstone from the castle to the river, through which parliamentarian soldiers escaped from the castle during the Civil War. Today there's no trace of the building that once dominated Liverpool's skyline, but it still lives on in the street names such as Castle Street. In Lever Park in Rivington near Chorley, William Lever built a folly which is a scale replica of Liverpool Castle which is now in ruins. <music> Building started in 1912 and the replica, which was not completed, was based on a conjectural reconstruction of the castle prepared by E.W. Cox in 1892. Some people say that this castle was built deliberately as a ruin to overlook the reservoir. Only a small number of stonemasons and labourers worked on the site and the build, slow in progress, was abandoned in 1925 after William Lever's death. Present owners are United Utilities. Were this to be a real castle, three hidden defensive passengers can be found built into the tower walls of Lever Castle.
These will provide access to strategically placed arrow slits or bow loops around the circumference of the towers. The arrow slits are narrow vertical windows through which archers could shoot arrows. Lever Castle has two hidden passages built into the walls leading off from the main staircase. The upper passage is only a small section, but the remains of the passage floor can be seen on the upper part of the wall. This passage would lead to an arrow slit facing away from the reservoir. A second passage, easily accessible at ground level, will be found to lead off from the foot of the staircase that curves round the opposite side of the tower and commands an excellent view along the sides of the castle and down to the reservoir. The lower passage often features in children's games of hide and seek and is often known as the secret passage. If the prison tower lower passage is a secret passage, the great tower passage is an even greater secret. Passages of Lever Castle seem to be scaled down as the rest of the structure and are, as a result, quite narrow. It will be extremely difficult to handle a bow in such a confined space. The Great Tower Passage is now unreachable since the collapse of the stairs to the upper portion of the Great Tower. The passage is stable and very well preserved with dressed stone walls and stone flagged floor and roof. The passage can be seen to follow the curve of the tower with an arrow slit looking towards the prison tower. The main staircase of Lever Castle was a usable spiral staircase until its collapse in the early 1980s.